What's up guys, Matt Nash here. Today we're gonna to be doing a special episode all about my new album, Half Human. We're gonna talk about my reasons for wanting to make an album and also we're gonna be going to my studio and having a look at some specific tracks and some stories about how they came about and what inspired them. I really wanted to make an album um, just to have like a body of work that was together, that felt like mine, that really defined my sound right now. I think every artist at some point really wants to go ahead and make a whole album and it's quite creatively freeing to look at an album because you can make a lot of different stuff, you know. Before, when festivals were going and shows were going and, and clubs and stuff, it was very much focused on making music that worked for the dance floor, you know, and that kind of puts a framework in what a sound and like how a track needs to be and, and how it needs to work. And luckily, you know, I had a lot more studio time over the past two years, which allowed me to sort of experiment more. And an album gives you a lot more freedom with sounds and structures and okay, it, it, we can just focus on good songs and good melodies and cool sounds rather than focusing on something that has to work in the dance floor. So it's quite freeing creatively um, and it allowed me to just sort of do different stuff. And that was a, a big part of why I wanted to make an album. Uh, the sound of my album uh, is very much defined by mixing sort of sounds that sound quite analog and real and have movement and feeling to them with sort of like futuristic sounds and really nice sounding production. I really love uh, using like organic elements like brass sounds and, and nice like attacked pads and things like that and with a combination of, you know, really nice vocals. Some people like to call it sort of like future trance, which I, you know, I'm not too keen on. I like to prefer more like a future progressive kind of vibe and I feel like it's a mixture of those sort of things and I really do try and make sure I have a sound that's there. And I think you'll, you'll hear it quite clearly in the tracks. So inspiration for me, for music, can come from so many different things, you know. When I'm in the studio, it can be like a sound that inspires me. Sometimes it's like a melody I hear in my head. Sometimes it, it can be a vocal I've been sent from a, a, a singer or something like that. You know, equally, I can be driving in the car doing the most mundane thing and I can have an idea for a track, you know, or I can be watching a cool TV show. It, it really is limitless. I wouldn't say there's one like definitive thing. What I also found was quite interesting when making this album is I didn't have the usual inspiration of like crowds and shows and festivals. So at the beginning, it was kind of like difficult to figure out exactly to get going creatively. But um, once I sort of realized that I didn't have really any constraints with what this music needed to sound and do, it sort of allowed me just to you know, be creative and see where we ended up. Half Human originally was triggered by uh, a track from the album called Human, which is one that was sat on my computer for like three years. It was just this little vocal that I sang in uh, one time. A lot of the times when I'm working in the studio, um, I'm not a particularly great singer, but I'll, I hear an idea and I'll just like record it in. And it started with this human track and as we were going through the process and as the album was coming together, I was just going through loads of different names with my manager and we sort of ended up at Half Human and we kind of, it's a lot to do with, you know, um, how these days you're so intertwined with technology that you know, you're know you basically half human and, and partly you know controlled by technology. And then it's also another side of it is when you, you don't feel like you're acting yourself 100%, and you're not feeling yourself, and that's when you maybe feel like you're half human. So it's got like a couple of different meanings to it. So the 3D side of um, the visuals and artwork originally started when I, uh, a couple of years ago, I was building this live visual show called Futurism, which I just started to tour before Corona. And we built out loads of 3D assets for this. So specifically my 3D, like we, we made a full 3D character of myself and a 3D character of Gizmo. So we originally made this for this, this tour and then after we got, you know, full breaks on that and only getting to do four shows of a tour, we were like, okay, cool. Like, how can we continue this concept on? And we sort of decided that it's a really nice way for all of the visuals and artwork to tie together and to have great storytelling was to use these 3D characters in different scenarios and environments and sort of play on that sci-fi spacey feel um, that I love so much. 
So originally I got started with Stamped um, because Martijn picked up Lose It All, which is the first track of the album for his Dutch Waters set, which is the live stream on the boat. And he played it out there as an ID and everyone was super lost over like who it was. You know, they thought it was him featuring, I can't remember some singers and stuff. And it got like a really crazy buzz. Um, and then we started obviously working with the label together on that track. And it, we just really liked working with each other. And we started releasing a couple more songs like You're Not Alone and Wasted Love. And then I was like, hey, you know, wouldn't it be really cool to, to do an album? And you know, the, the label was really, really supportive of this idea and just kind of let me have creative uh, freedom with it. So they sort of, you know, allowed me to go out there and find how I wanted it to visually look and then how I wanted it to sound. And it also gave me great feedback on the music. And it was a very easy creative process, you know, and that's my favorite thing about working with Stamped is that they are this label and they, but they're not like, you know, they, they let me do what I, I kind of, what I feel is right, you know, as an artist. And that's so, so rare these days. And it's one of, you know, one of my favorite reasons why I like working together. What's up guys, uh, we're now in my studio where I made the whole of the album and we're gonna have a look at some of the tracks, the stories behind them and the inspirations um, and give you guys a little insight on how they were made. Let's dive in. So first up, we're gonna look at um, the track Human, which is the one that sort of triggered the whole album. Um, and originally this was a, an idea which I sang and made a track around about three years ago. But um, for whatever reason, I couldn't make it turn into a track. I was never happy with how it's sounding. So I thought it'd be cool to play you the original version that I made three years ago. And then also we could look at some of the newer elements I made on the, the new version. Let's dive in. This is the, um, the old version. Cool. Uh, so the main thing I took on to the new one was just the vocal. And uh, this one was in G. And basically what I did is on the new one, I took it up to B. So four semitones higher. Um, so now if I just play you the um, new vocal, you should hear the similarities. And then I think also, apart from just moving it up four semitones, I also um loaded little altar boy onto the track and um yeah just played a new melody into the uh, the keyboard just to sort of re-bring it some life and for some reason when i put it into b and wrote some new music around it it just came to life and i was like you know what this song could really do with some more vocals and some more lyrics to it so i went ahead and sang the verse part so we'll give that a little listen Lost in my thoughts So there you have it. This was sort of how human came to be, what it eventually uh, is. And I also find it quite interesting that the main hook of the song was written like two, three years ago. And then this bit comes in, you know, recently and kind of, yeah, it still feels like it's together, even though it was written so far apart. All right, guys, so the next track we're going to talk about is called uh, Be Here. And this track is, again, something that took lots of different versions and changed what it was going to be quite a few different times. But this this song is really built upon my desire to sort of play with analog synths. And even though there's no analog synths here, I sort of went through extra effort to kind of make the synth sounds feel analog and have lots of movement to them and feel a little bit broken. Uh, to give character. So I'm just going to look at a couple of those things in the track to sort of show you show you that basically. Uh, so first up, it's kind of built around this ARP sound that, that detunes in and out of itself throughout the whole track basically. And as this synth sort of opens out and builds through the track, it, you can hear it more obviously detuning. But this just kind of, for me, gives it that like broken synth sort of tone. And this 
basically this sound goes throughout the whole song and it kind of is like the bed that everything else gets built around. Uh, the other element that for me is really analog is the bass sound because it's got this quite resonant -y, um, like vowel kind of tone to it. So um, yeah, let's go look at that a little bit. Yeah, and for me, that sort of that opening and closing of the filter for me is really what makes it sound so analog. So uh, maybe one day I'll get some analog stuff and actually uh, do this for real. But for now, this is what sort of inspired this track. I'm now going to take you through probably one of my favorite tracks of the album called Rooftops. Um, this is really cool because the kind of how the track came about was quite fun. Originally, I was just made this demo. I didn't really intend it to be a song. It was originally going to be a song that I was just going to make like a pure no drum sort of like moody ambient thing. But it started with me singing in this these vocal hook, which is like an ooh type thing. And uh, I was just playing on the keyboard. I had this chord progression. I heard this melody in my head. I was like, oh, I should record it. And uh, it was basically this. So I was literally just playing this this chord pattern and then I heard this this vocal melody and I was like, oh, I love this. This sets a, a big vibe. So I basically built out a really quick demo because I just, when you've got that first inspiration, I really like to just knock through and get a, a small arrangement in there. Uh, but I didn't do any any part of the drop or build up. So I just did literally what I thought it progressed, you know, each element coming in. And I DM'd uh, a singer on Instagram called Leo Stannard. And he's uh, an amazing singer and writer. The reason I found him was because uh, he does some stuff with a producer called Kidnap. I'm a massive fan on it. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm, I gotta DM this guy and see if, see if he's down and see if he wants to make something. So I sent him a DM and he replied straight away saying, yo, I'd love to do something, send me something. I was like, oh, I've got something, sent him this demo. And then he wrote the vocals back on top, literally straight away. And uh, I took the vocals back. Once I had the vocals, I was like, this is great. Let me just finish the rest of the song. And I just went ahead and finished it. So um, that's kind of how it came together. I mean, let's just play the vocal that Leo wrote and sang over it. I just wanna live. One thing I really love, which Leo did here, he's obviously got an amazing voice um, and he sent me three different parts of it. And he also had this like harmony stack he put in there, like going around certain lines and they're quite subtle. So you might miss them, but I'll play them now just because they're, they sound amazing. I just want to lay here quiet on the rooftop, talk about the whole life. Yeah, so there we go. This is kind of the story about how Rooftops came to be. It's one of my favorites on the album. It's just pure feels and pure emotion. Um, so, uh, I think you guys are gonna love it too. All right, guys, so the final track that we're going to dive into here in the studio is one called Other Side. It's like the album closer, as it were. And for me, it's very much a track which, you know, apart from the lyrics saying we've reached the end, it very much feels that way musically. Um, and I just wanted to point out some of my favorite parts in the track and also some of the parts that sort of triggered the creative moments that helped it sort of develop. So first up um, is this this vocoder of my own voice again. In this track, all of the vocals are from me again. And it was this main vocoder line that really set the mood for where the track could go. Uh, and I'm gonna play that line quickly. We've reached the end. Big massive reverb and I did it with this this weird plugin called Ovox and it just kind of had that futuristic feel but also had loads of emotion to it. So I kind of had that in there and I kind of wanted to have other vocals to be like call and answer to it, you know. So like you have this really heavily vocoded vocal and I kind of wanted another bit of vocal to answer back to it. I have this vocal like answering it back so it feels like this. 
So it has like this nice like push and pull to it, which I really liked. And then also the another thing which I really loved about this was this bass sound here. <laughs> So this sound, um, it, I, again, I used it on the human track as well. And it's just super inspiring. When I found it and like processed it up and had it had it really working, it was just so easy to like just come up with something. And that sort of inspired this riff where it's bouncing up and down between the octaves. Like It just has some sort of like, kind of gives me that like MGMT kind of indie electronica feel. and. And that was a big uh, inspiration and like a big driving point to it turning out how it did. All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining me today, taking you through this uh, half human special. I've really enjoyed telling you the stories about the album, where I made it, and also diving into some of the tracks. You can go check out the album on all your favorite streaming platforms. Tell me what you think about it on my socials. And I hope to see you guys at a show very soon.